All rise. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. The Supreme Court of Florida is now in session. All the way across to plea, draw near. Give attention, you shall be heard. God save these United States, great state of Florida, and this honorable court. Ladies and gentlemen, the Supreme Court of Florida, please be seated. <clears throat> Good morning and welcome to the Florida Supreme Court. Today we'll take up case number 22-181, Universe Corporation versus Joey's New York Pizza, LLC. Whenever you're ready, counsel. May it please the court. My name is Matt Canigliero. I am with Carlton Fields. With me today is John Gardner, and we are here on behalf of the petitioner in this case, Unifirst. In a way, the question that is presented to the court in this case looks a little bit like something you might see on the appellate certification exam or perhaps a law school exam. It essentially asks when a trial court enters an order vacating an arbitration award and directing or permitting a new arbitration. Is that order reviewable either by appeal under 9.130 or by certiorari, petition for writ of certiorari? The district courts are in conflict on the second part of that question over whether certiorari is available. The district courts are not in conflict regarding 9.130. We ask the court two things. First, to consider and to determine that yes, indeed, these orders can be appealed under 9.13 under the plain text of the rule. And if the court were to disagree on that, to agree with us that, at a minimum, as the first DCA has decided, that certiorari review should be available. With regard to the first argument, the text of 9.130 is clear. It says an order determining the entitlement of a party to arbitration can be reviewed. And so the, the legal dispute here is whether orders like this one determine the entitlement of a party to arbitration. Counsel, I'm sorry to interrupt you, though. but. If we were to take up that issue in this case, wouldn't it be academic since we wouldn't be able to give you relief on that basis given that you didn't raise it until the motion for rehearing? Uh, we, we disagree, Your Honor. We think it, having raised it on rehearing, it was still raised before the, the second DCA. It was considered by the second DCA and denied on its merits. So we believe it's, it's appropriate. And it's also sort of fundamental to the ultimate question of certiorari because to get to the question well, but, uh, on don't you waive an issue if it's not uh, presented in your briefing to the court? I mean, the idea that you're going to get into new issues because they're raised on rehearing, is that what the law of Florida allows in the appellate process? Well, and I, I believe it does in some cases, Your Honor. And this, we would in suggest, this one in particular. <laughs> we would suggest this should be one of them. That it's a jurisdictional question. It's a question of law. Um, it, it could have been raised in the initial response to the show cause order, but the law permits a motion for rehearing. Uh, part of rehearing is to address uh, what may have been. No, but it's what the court overlooked. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, it's not what the it's not what the lawyers overlooked. Uh, yeah. And again, I'm not. Again, you you you're, uh, understand. You're just flying this vehicle, okay? Um, so, uh, but look, can I ask you another question? What in this case? What is really left for the trial court to do? I mean, this could go off and the trial court could be done with this. Well, the reason these are considered non-final is because when the parties have uh, been directed to a new arbitration proceeding, it, the, the expectation is they will have to come back to, to complete the judicial labor of confirming ultimately some award. And that's part of the problem here. We can end up in a loop where this just continues. And on the, uh, the non-final appeal side, you have much like you'd have the opportunity to seek review of a new trial order, this should be reviewed. And on the certiorari side, it, it is irreparable harm because none of this is what arbitration contemplates. And, and just to return to, to the earlier question, uh, it, it is ultimately part and parcel of answering the certiorari question to understand whether there's an appellate option available. And the, whether it's in this case or one of the tagged cases to this case where that issue was raised, the appeal was taken as a 9.130. Uh, 
ultimately, it's the same question for the court, which is what, what, if anything, is the vehicle that allows these orders to be reviewed? And, and respectfully, we suggest the answer is, and it's not academic, it's actually present in this case, albeit raised on rehearing. It, the answer is it should be a 9.130 non-final appeal. And it's because these orders do determine that the parties are entitled to arbitrate again. And that's the key word here, is entitlement. What does it mean to have uh, determined the entitlement but the, but, to arbitrate? But, counsel, that wasn't in dispute. And the, 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 the issue about whether this was subject to arbitration was not a matter of dispute, was it? It was after the arbitration ended, and the parties were in the circuit court for the first time, with one side asking for the award to be confirmed and the other side asking for the award to be vacated. And that that's, point, not about, that's not about whether it's subject to arbitration. That's about how, you know, whether there was some defect uh, that, uh, that the circuit court could uh, address. That's the case, Your Honor, but, but the, the rule is entitlement to arbitration. At the time both parties came to the circuit court, neither side was entitled to arbitrate again. When we left the circuit court, both sides were entitled to arbitrate again, and it was this order that did it. The order vacated the award and said, in essence, the plaintiff can reinstitute arbitration proceedings. These are a real problem for parties in arbitration, uh, because if an award is vacated, and there are, there are many different grounds for, for vacature, you know, fraud as an example. In fact, one of the tag cases involves a, a court finding a discovery problem, and on that basis, finding there was a fraud on the arbitration panel. And then you have to go back and re-arbitrate the case to get that reviewed, which is exactly the opposite of what the sort of quick, inexpensive, and final process is supposed to be in arbitration. And uh, for the courts to, uh, to not allow for immediate review of that means the court is going to stop finality by taking away the original award and then not let that be reviewed until a new arbitration happens. And I'll suggest, just to give an, an example, which is actually a real-life example, if, say, a, an order is entered it's finding fraud and requiring a new arbitration or permitting a new arbitration, what if the new arbitration comes out the exact same way? There was a fraud finding, which everyone involved might want to have reviewed whether you're uh, happy with the second outcome or not because a judge found fraud. But is it moot? If it comes out the same way the second time, the system is carefully designed to allow for prompt review of things that, that call for prompt review. And I'll suggest that this is one that has sort of slipped a bit through the cracks. Uh, 9.130, if it didn't have the provision it does, I think would be well served to include it. And in the absence of 9.130, certiorari should be available. And that's what the first DCA has decided. I guess if we were to reach this, though, it seems like you're, um, you're putting a lot on the, on the word entitled or entitlement. You're reading it so that essentially any time arbitration is appropriate, I could say, or whether the appropriateness of arbitration is in dispute, I could argue whether a party's entitlement. Those are two different concepts. I guess to build on something you were just saying, speed matters, right? What all of these things have in common is it matters that we get it right quickly. And I can understand why the entitlement of a party vel non to arbitration at the outset of litigation is something you want to get right fast. Because if they've bargained for it, you know, that's a right they have. Okay, great. But down field, once we've already arbitrated, once it, now we're saying, well, entitlement matters. We have to get it done quickly. It seems to me like you're asking that concept of entitlement to bear more than what the word entitled means, which means, generally speaking, you have the right to it, which is a question we decide ab initio, not it should happen now. I mean, do you, what's, what's to stop your reading of the word entitlement or entitled to sort of um, be substituted with the word, is, arbitra is further arbitration appropriate now? Is that how you read the word entitlement? Uh, no, Your Honor. It, it, in some ways, I, I could argue that it's, it's a better fit for this context than the original one. Because in the original context, where a party, say someone files a lawsuit against a defendant, and the defendant says, we have an arbitration agreement, this should be an arbitration, not here. Uh, the, the court is really determining that 
that agreement exists and it's applicable to the case. It's not giving you the right, it's just recognizing the right. And so it certainly fits the text, but I'll suggest that it's almost a better fit if later in the case, when the arbitration is over, no, at that point, no one has the ability to say, I'm going to just do this again. I'll re-notice with the AAA a new arbitration. No one has that right at that point because it's already over and been done. And yet, through these proceedings, the vacature proceeding, the, the circuit court decides, I'm going to vacate the award and allow you all to do this again. That's actually giving the parties the right to do it again. And it is a right. But so don't I, you think in a case like this where the basis for vacator is improper notice and there's been no litigation over the substantive entitlement to arbitration, if there were a new one, couldn't, if one of the parties said, you know, this isn't within the scope of our agreement or whatever, I mean, that could be, that would really be decided at that point, right? I mean, you're not saying that this, the one kind of line in this order that says, you know, it's further a judge that, you know, they may insti reinstitute proceedings. You're not saying that that would sort of bind the future proceedings to say that the issue of whether the dispute could be arbitrated at all, that that's completely off the table. Uh, no, Your Honor. And I think it, it would be a, a question that would get raised at an appropriate time, whether it's in some cases in front of the arbitration forum, some cases in court. So it really hasn't determined it then? Well, it's, it's determined that there is a right, and that's really the... The right to initiate a proceeding, but if, the, you know, what, the, the, the non-initiating party could say at that point, this isn't fit for arbitration, it's not part of our agreement, whatever, and that, and that would be, as opposed to a true <coughs> order that determines whether something can be arbitrated, which presumably kind of locks in that decision and then people go off and they litigate whatever is left to be litigated. Well, I, respectfully, it, it, what's happening here is still a form of a determination of entitlement. Uh, th there may be multiple instances and it may be subject to debate whether there's one is sort of a, a more pure or complete form of determination. But this order determines that both parties have the right to go back to this arbitration forum and re-arbitrate this case. And, and uh, for those reasons, we think this fits within 9.130. But if it doesn't, we get back to the question that the districts are in conflict over, which is, is this something that should be subject to certiorari? And the first DCA has it right in saying it is. This is not just a matter of time and expense. This is a matter of essentially infringing or impeding or in some ways really harming the bargain that the parties have made pursuant to Florida statutes, pursuant to federal legislation that allows for the parties to step out of the judicial, th these walls, so to speak, and resolve these matters in a different forum, an arbitration forum. And that resolution is supposed to be prompt and inexpensive and final. And here, when the judiciary by statute has stepped in that it is necessary in order for there not to be irreparable harm for the courts to review that when it happens, not to make the parties go through yet another arbitration proceeding where you could get the same result, you could get a different result, but either way you've had to redo an entire proceeding just to talk about at that point whether the first one was the correct result. And that's not something that can be squared with the concept that this is supposed to be a final, expeditious, and inexpensive alternative to litigation. So with respect to the DCAs that have disagreed, uh, the first DCA has gotten this right. If a non-final non appeal is not available, then certiorari should be available. It fits exactly within the circumstances of certiorari. And uh, while certainly 9.13 would be a better vehicle from the perspective of the person seeking review, certiorari is infinitely superior to having to proceed through the new arbitration proceeding again and then face the question of what do we do? If you, if you win the second time, is it moot? If you lose the second time, do you then appeal saying the, the first one should have stuck? Uh, what if the second one for some reason gets vacated? as well. Theoretically, this can continue for quite a while. And none of that is the way this should happen. The judiciary should be, uh, I would suggest, respectful of what the legislature and Congress have done in setting up this alternative system. 
and recognize that this is not simply a party unhappy with having to continue to litigate in the first instance like you would if a motion to dismiss were denied improperly or a motion for summary judgment were denied improperly. That this is a circumstance that is worthy of certiorari. In fact, if, if the court were to sort of look through the different areas where certiorari is generally available, it's, it's rather broad. The test is, is high, the bar is high, but any case that involves the discovery of personal information is certiorari, worthy at least. Uh, this is a situation where parties have invoked a statutory procedure, gone through it, and then a judge has decided it wasn't right, and that can't get reviewed without having to redo the entire proceeding. That This is something worthy of certiorari. So we ask if the court reaches the second question, that it determine that the first DCA has correct, correctly found that certiorari is the appropriate vehicle to review these types of orders. And if I could save the balance is, of my time. Can I ask you, though, as far as, should we care, though, to the extent that we are trying to kind of have a remedy that's consistent with the statutory scheme and with the sort of overall purpose of this, should we care that the legislature specifically uh, allows appeals for an order vacating an award without directing a rehearing? Um, and I understand that the whole point of CERD is where an appeal isn't available, but I mean, it seems like it'd be weird for us to say that we're somehow kind of you know, giving effect to the statutory scheme by recognizing this off-ramp when the legislature specifically considered what they wanted to be reviewed and they obviously wrote this in a way that says that if there is, I know that here there's an ambiguity as to whether it was really directed or not. And I mean, there's all kinds of reasons why this case is messed up and that's, you know, that's just one of them. But, it's a, it's but a technical, if, we technical term, that it, if we assume that it really was directed, I mean, the legislature has specifically spoken mm -hmm. to that. I, well, I appreciate the question. I, I'll suggest that the legislature was actually focused on something different. That what the, the, the statutory scheme is trying to do there is to identify areas of finality and to try to say that in these circumstances, the judicial labor is over. And it, it's not just that it's appealable. The, the statute today is very clear that those circumstances uh, warrant a judgment. So if there is a vacature without a rehearing, then the trial court or the circuit court is, is directed to enter judgment. And of course, that, that's a final judgment immediately appealable. So I don't think the circumstance was trying to say implicitly that that where a rehearing is required, it's not worthy of an appeal. I think it was a different focus. It was trying to say these are circumstances where there will be finality. But isn't the judicial labor, labor I mean, no, you don't have to confirm an arbitration award, right? I mean, so, so in this case, I mean, once they vacate and send it back to the arbitrator, the judicial labor could be over, right? I mean, there's no certainty that there's going to be more judicial labor. I, I agree with that, Your Honor. The, the trouble is the orders themselves don't show finality unless a court were to hold that these are final orders. I'll, I'll suggest that hasn't been raised in this case. Uh, and without that sort of finality, then there's there's no conclusion to the case. The way the statutory scheme well, is set up... In, let me ask you this. In, this, in the second district... The original notice of appeal, was that an, a, a, a framed as an appeal of a final order? My recollection is that it was, but I want to tell it, you I'm not certain. It, it was, but I want right. to tell you I'm and not then the, certain. And then the that. second came in and said, well, no. <laughs> to show cause. It was an order to show cause, right, yes, right. and asked how should this be handled. And, and, it, and yes, it was on rehearing that 9.130 was raised. Okay, we'll give you an extra minute on rebuttal. Thank you, Your Honor. Thanks. Good morning. <clears throat> May it please the court. My name is Victor Stephen Cohen. I'm from Tampa. Along with my colleagues, Shami Dixit and Zane Katz. We represent the respondents, three Joey's Pizza of New York entities. I'm just going to refer to them as either the respondent or Joey's Pizza. The second district in this case correctly dismissed universe appeal because the second district was not vested with the authority to review a trial court's order that vacates an arbitration award and directs rehearing. 
There's not a question, as counsel um, stated, there's not a conflict in the district courts as to whether that order is reviewable under 9.130. The first district and the petitioner, really what they're arguing is these orders should be subject to some sort of appellate review. And what they've done is they've tried to shoehorn it into cert jurisdiction. But it doesn't really belong there either. And it doesn't belong there because you don't have irreparable harm. And as every court except for two panels with the first district have noted, expense and time are not bases for irreparable harm. It doesn't exist here. The second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth have it right. The first district panels in Amalgamated and Felger have it wrong. And there's really a conflict in the first district. Because if you read heart surgery, which came in between the Felger decision and the Amalgamated decision, the only reason they accepted cert jurisdiction is because they felt obliged to based on the precedent was set by Felger, not because they agreed that there was irreparable harm. Uh, opposing counsel discussed uh, finality, and I know that that's an important issue for arbitration. Arbitration is supposed to be inexpensive, it's supposed to be quick, and it is supposed to be final. But finality cannot come at the expense of fairness and due process. And that is what this particular case is about, is due process. But if you read 682.13, which governs when a trial court in the state of Florida can vacate an arbitration award, what you'll see is that most of those bases are about fundamental fairness, corruption, fraud, things like that. And so when you read the cases and you look at why the trial courts are vacating these awards, what you'll see is that they didn't think that it was done in a fair way. And that is equally as important when it hits the court system, fairness and due process, as finality. And I think the, legislators re the legislature sorry, has recognized that. And I also think that they've recognized specifically that this instance, order vacating and directing rehearing is not a final appealable order. That's not to say that your honors can't amend the rules of appellate procedure. You can always do that, I think, and add it to the list of interlocutory appeals. But an, an order vacating and directing rehearing is simply not the same as determining entitlement. I think uh, Your Honor Ray asked the question about you know the focus on the word entitlement. I think that's the wrong focus. The focus should be on the word determination. None of the orders on appeal determined entitlement. No court was asked to. Entitlement was not a fight. It wasn't litigated. Everyone agreed. There's an arbitration agreement. We have to go to arbitration. So there was no determination made. We believe strongly that the second district has it right here that the order should be, that the court's determination does not have jurisdiction be affirmed. If you have no questions, I don't want to waste the court's time. I will sit down. Thank you. I will speak just quickly to Council's point about there not having been a determination. When the parties arrived in front of the circuit court, no one had a right to arbitrate the case again. No one could do it. The court, Joey's Pizza, asked the court to vacate that award and allow the case to be arbitrated again. That may be a different type of determination than the determination made at the outset of a lawsuit where we're talking about whether there's a contractual right to arbitrate or that sort of thing. But it's still a form 
of entitlement to arbitrate, and it's still a determination. And after that determination was made, determine really should just mean order. After the court ordered what it did here, then the parties then had the right to arbitrate. And so, respectfully, if, if we're under 9.130, there has been a determination. There has been a determination of entitlement. And if we're not, if we're dealing with certiorari, then as the first DCA correctly decided, then these are situations involving irreparable harm if it's not reviewed immediately. And for those reasons, we ask the court to quash the order that is now on review. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're adjourned for today. All rise.